San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Noah Beery, Sam Elliott, Lane Bradbury. Special guest star Jim Davis. Tonight's episode The Hard Breed. in San Francisco, the Grand National Rodeo, most of the top cowboys in America, with some of the finest stock ever assembled, ready for a taste of the old west. Working with us to keep us up to date on what's going on, Lex Conley, former champion cowboy himself, now manager of the Cow Palace. Lex, let's turn those cowboys loose. All right, Keith, and the contest we're going to see right now is the bull riding. Bull riding. Now, this is the one event every... Well, we got to go. I know. <laughs> Now tell me, how did a fashion designer get so hooked on the rodeo, huh? My grandmother had a ranch in Wyoming. I spent my summers there. Yeah? Well, you're hanging out with the cowboys, huh? Shh. We'll pick a winner. Well, I think you'd have to say that it's going to be one of the Johnson brothers. Oh, it's down to the Johnson brothers. It's down to the Johnson brothers. Who the Johnson brothers? Mo, if we lose that table, we don't get another one. They got a little thing called a waiting list, you know. Just one more ride, okay? I'm hungry. Boy's tough to fight and tough to hook, Clint. Watch him. Ah, here he's already put in for a pinch. It's gonna be like riding whipped cream, Clint. <laughs> yeah, well, you better take another look, little brother. I hear that he's a real honker. Hey, Rosie, how about a kiss for luck? Where'd you get that? That ain't a way to ride. Let me have it. How about you, Bo? Aren't you gonna wish me luck? You've lived this long without it. Hey, Clint, you draw a bad one. He's mean to fight. You just do your job. I'll do mine. <laughs> sure. Hey, Rosie, how come you're so pretty and you're hooked up with such an ugly, ornery, bow-legged cuss as this? Let her buck. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
your doctor. No need, Dad. He's dead. <laughs> God. No. It's like riding your headstone every second. Yeah. Let's go. You've seen it before, haven't you? People dying, yeah. I haven't. It's awful. Well, it happened fast, and he was doing something he wanted to. Oh, boy. This was plants from the first day in full. Turned him into the best calf horse the circuit. Nobody could ride him like Clint. Nobody will. Where's Ken? He's uh, with Rosie. Where you been, Marty? I've been looking for you. What is it, Marty? Now I just keep a thinking if I could have got to that bull quicker, Clint. It wasn't your fault. I know that now. I, I've been over there in the arena kind of mulling over in my head what happened, and I found this. I figured in all the excitement it must have got buried in the dirt there. It's been cut clean nearly halfway. That's right, with a razor sharp knife or something. That rope come off the bull that Clint was riding. Are you trying to tell me it was no accident? Ah, oh, Roy, you know Clint was too good a hand to come off a bull like that or get caught with them hooves. Roy, I'm telling you, Clint was killed. He's got one foot up on the dashboard. He's got one foot outside the window. He's holding out. He turns over and he looks at me. Oh, no. No, no. Oh, yes. No. Yes, yes. Sorry. I apologize for busting in like this, Miss uh, oh, Marine. This is Lieutenant Michael Stone, Marine Mallory. Marine. Oh, uh, you're Mo. Nice to meet you, Lieutenant. Or is it? No. It could have been nicer. We got a special request. I'll fill you in on the way. my car. I'll try to call you later, okay? Sorry, Marie. Pretty expensive for a cop, isn't it? It's a very special occasion. Yeah, she looks special. I'll bet Juan Marichal wishes he had your pitch. Just wish I had his salary. Thank you very much. So fill me in. Well, the way I hear it, we've got thousands of witnesses. A Rodeo cowboy was riding a bull. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I saw that on uh, television. But it was an accident, unless you're gonna book the bull. Well, I guess you didn't see it all, unless you saw the bull use a knife. You've got so many eyes on that girl, you can't see the television set. If somebody did cut this part way, could they count on the rest of it giving? Yeah, they give without being cut sometimes. When them bulls start kicking, it's like hell with the lid off. What would be the motive? I don't care about why, just who. We'll do our best. We're outsiders here, Lieutenant Strangers. Aside from Clint being my son, he was a man. And no big city red tape can change that. Mr. Johnson, if it was murder, we'll find out who did it. Finds a killer, he's gonna hang him. Yeah, he did lose his son. What did you get from the other cowboys? Well, everybody says it was an accident that was bound to happen sooner or later. How's that? Because Clint used to hit it before each ride. Booze, huh? Booze, yeah, and pills, pain pills. He had a bad leg, he never let it heal. Well, then why did he keep riding? Well, they're like that. Look, I met one of those guys over there. He used to ride with two broken wrists. If a cowboy can crawl, he'll ride. Yeah, I guess they are a hard breed, all right. <laughs> Say, how about the rope? Well, each man usually handles his own, but with Clint, he had somebody else who helped him. Who was that? His brother. Hello. 
Hello. Howdy. Hi. I'm Lieutenant Stone. This is Inspector Keller. Hi. Which one of you is Jensen? Oh, that'd be me, Lieutenant. Well, then you must be Bo Dodds. Yes, sir. I know that you saw one of our officers before and told him what you saw, but I'd like to ask you a couple of questions myself, if you don't mind. Anything we can do. Thanks a lot. I hear that uh, you two go way back. Uh, more years than I'd care to mention. We were riding a circuit when there was nothing but dusty old towns. Bo and me, we rode Bronx together till our rumps turned into raw meat. <laughs> That's when I turned to clowning. Bo handles the stock. We've been saving up to buy us a little ranch, fixing not going in together. Well, how long have you known the Johnsons? Well, Roy and Bo, they, they go way back, before we even met, ain't it? Uh, Roy's a good old boy. I sure hate to see him hurt this way. Well, what about Clinton and his brother? Were they as close as you two? Oh, they were as fierce when it come to competition. But they respected one another. Roy wouldn't have it no other way. But weren't they uh, one-two in the championships? Hey, now, wait a minute. You ain't thinking that Ken cut that rope, are you? Just trying to find a reason. Well, if winning the championship was reason, the circuit would be lined with dead cowboys. They was loving brothers. Didn't they ever disagree upon anything? What was it about? I expect they'll find out anyways. Find out what? You tell them, Bo. It, uh... It was Rosie. Rosie? Yes, That's Clint's wife. Oh, she ain't no bad girl. It's just, well, she's pretty as a pair of pink slippers. They fought over her? Well, they got into it a couple years ago. I still got me a split tooth from breaking it up. <laughs> of course, that's before Clint and Rosie were married. Before they were married, well, Rosie was Ken's girl. Police want to talk to us? Tomorrow. I told them the uh, little widow was so broken up over the whole thing that she just couldn't talk. I still don't buy anyone who set out to kill Clint. Somebody shaved that rope. What do you think about that girl? I don't know what to think about it. Did you ever once, just once, care for him? I loved him. Till he started slipping into a bottle every day in somebody else's bed every night. What are you doing? You know how it was with him. What you wanted to say? Maybe, uh... Maybe Clinton wasn't much of a husband to her. Still a son to me and a brother to you. Just leave her be. Well, she needs someone, Bo. I know, but not you. something besides a cracked tooth. Where have you been all morning? Well, I had to get my car. 
Because after 9 o'clock, I went to pick you up at 7, you weren't home. Where does she live anyway, Monterey? 7 o'clock. I knew it. You know, I knew you were going to do that. That's why I went... That's why you went to pick up your car last night. Lieutenant, very good. Very, very good. You know, I think you've got a future with this department. You're cruising. I really mean it. You're cruising. Listen, I've been cruising all morning. Rosie Johnson. She was born Rosalind Commons in Odessa, Texas, 1944. Folks were dirt farmers, and she took off when she was 15. She's been with the rodeo ever since. She competed with the women on the circuit until she married Clint Johnson two years ago. Where did you get that? Well, those cowboys get up with the chickens, too, you know. <laughs> I guess they do. Is that all? No. Her husband has an insurance policy. $50,000. And she is the beneficiary? The only one, yeah. So what'd you get, huh? Sitting here in the nice comfort of your warm office mm. while I was out there watching where I stepped? Well, I got in touch with the TV network who filmed the Rodeo. Good. They said we could look at the tapes any time we wanted to. I ran a make on Ken Johnson. He's got a record here someplace. Here it is. Disturbing the peace, uh -huh. drunk and disorderly assault. Nothing man. big, but there is a history of violence there. Yeah, sounds like you just got it on too much after... I got the office. autopsy report on uh, Johnson's brother. The alcoholic content was 1.2%. Okay, enough to be legally drunk. And plenty out of control when you mix it with those painkillers he was taking. That's a bad combination. He could have fallen off that bowl even if the rope wasn't cut. Yeah. What'd the lab say on that rope? It was cut. So what do you think? I think for openers, we've got two people who might have wanted to see him dead. First, his wife for the insurance, and then his brother for his wife. Now, that's just like old times. I make it 15-9. Uh, you shave that just a little, and you'll be sitting in for the state finals. Morning. Mrs. Johnson? Yes, sir? Out there's Lieutenant Stone. He's the man trying to find out what happened to Clint. Well, I better walk this horse out. I'll see you, Lieutenant. Quite a workout. But not exactly the grieving widow. No, I didn't say that. Everybody has to sort of work that out for themselves. You do know about the insurance money. Yes, I do. Fifty thousand dollars. Give me a good reason to want to see Clint dead, wouldn't it? Maybe you'd like to tell me how you feel about that. Just like I grew wings. <laughs> Are you planning on doing any flying? You're not very subtle, Lieutenant. That's how Ken Johnson goes from Rodeo to Rodeo, isn't it? Flies his own plane? Who told you about Ken and me? Well, it seems to be common knowledge. Then it also must be common knowledge that we broke up a long time ago. I heard that, too. But you don't want to believe it, do you? You want to believe the worst. You want to believe that maybe Ken and I tried to do something to get back together again, huh? Well, somebody cut that rope, and I'm just trying to find out who had a reason. I think you'd be interested in that, too. Unless you know already. You gonna arrest me? No. <laughs> then I reckon you don't do things any different here than we do back home. I mean, it's still the United States. You're innocent until you're proved guilty, right? That's right. Then how come I get the feeling you're trying to make me prove I'm innocent? I'm sure I don't know. Unless you're feeling something else, too. Like what? Guilt. thing, huh? Well, you can make more rodeos, build up more points. How'd your brother travel? 
Same way my dad did, pickup truck. Oh, man, thinks a cowboy ought to travel with a stock. Live with him, get to know him. Rather than shipping him around and meet some fancy schedule. Sounds like they were close. They were. Fact is, Clint tried to mirror Dad. One of his problems. Yeah, that could be tough. I understand your father was world champion. Yeah. But it didn't seem to bother you at all. <laughs> I wasn't under that kind of pressure. Sent me to college instead. I didn't take. Now he just figures me for an educated failure, no matter what I win. Sometimes we get along pretty good. Other times, it's like two bulls butting heads. But you and your brother were close. Close as two brothers can be. We were friends. Rosie. Now, I know she was your girl one time. Did that ever cause any friction between you and your brother? Some at first. Rosie knew a lot of guys for either one of us. Clinton knew that. Did it bother Clinton? Look, Ken, the autopsy report showed your brother was loaded on juice and pills. Now, you just told me your brother had a problem living up to your father. Do you have a problem with Rosie? That's none of your business. Your brother was murdered. Well, that's what you say. I say it was an accident. neck and told Charlie that he was riding a milk cow. He, he was so drunk, he didn't even know the difference. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reverse it next time. I'd give a lot of money to see Charlie try to milk a bull. <laughs> spread that Bo and me always talking about getting. We found her. Where is it? Well, it's in Montana, just a few miles out of Ennis. It's got a, oh, a, a pretty little creek runs through the middle of it and a, a good place for horses. That's terrific, Marjorie. I'm really happy for you. Lucy, what you gonna do with no one to look out for you, huh? $50,000 look out to me just fine. It won't last. Only people last. On that spread that Bo and me is gonna get, there's a place for you. You think on it, will you? You can't keep just drifting along the circuit like this. Thanks, Marty, but I'll be just fine. Been wanting to catch up with you. We're still ready with one sweet offer for you wearing our shirts next season. Later, huh? Rosie. I was just looking at Ken. She's still at Johnson, Marty. I reckon that makes her hard look out. seen this toad sticker before? No, I ain't never seen it before. Don't start running me around in circles, Marty. Oh, oh yeah, I recognize it. Now, that, that's Ken's knife. That's the one old Roy brought him from Mexico, ain't it? That's right. You want to know where I found it? Oh, maybe you already know where I found it, oh, Marty. Where are you going, Bo? I'm gonna go tell Roy what happened. There ain't no call for that. I'll tell you what there ain't no call for, Marty. There ain't no call for no little pink pretty like Rosie to go around messing up other people's lives. I seen you sitting here with her. And I seen them two sashaying out of here together, and I know what's going on. And Roy's gonna know the truth, Marty. And this knife. 
tells it all. I got, got my leg bunged up a little during the bareback. Billy's filling in for me. All right now? Oh, yeah, it's gonna be fine. Buy your drink? Well, I don't mind if I do. That ain't why I come in here, though. I, I wanted to show you before I show the police. Bo found that in the sawdust back of the chutes. Kind of a foreign-looking deal, ain't it? Yeah. Look close, Roy. Ain't them rope hairs on the blade? Why are you giving this to me? Well, Di, that, that ain't no store-bought knife. I never seen one like it before, and I figured maybe if, if you could put a face to it. Well, I know how you're trying to find the cutter. You did right. Buy this kind of drink. I was down. He was just trying to cheer me up. I don't see anything so wrong in that. What you see doesn't matter right now, Rosie. It's what other people are looking for, and they're looking to make you answer for Clint's death. Well, I didn't what he did. I didn't. Clint was the closest thing I ever came to love. I thought what, once I had him, I wouldn't need anything else. And then everything went sour on us. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I did what he did. I did, I did. You got a minute? Yeah, sure, Dad. Go on, I'll talk to you later. What you just saw there, don't go make anything of it. On a car, bitch, you. Lend me that jackknife of yours. I haven't got it. I'm talking about the one I give you. The one I picked up in Mexico. I know what you're talking about. I haven't got it. Where is it? Just disappeared. Lost it, I guess. Well, uh, where did you lose it? <laughs> I don't know. Shoots, maybe? That's where Bo found it. See them hairs? I'm betting they come from Clint's rope. You know what you're saying? I know. He was my brother. Why would I want to kill him? Because you wanted his own. That's why and what I just seen you got her. Oh, come on. No, you... Uh-uh. Going to the police? Nope. This is a family doing. Ooh. I'm not gonna fight you. I said I'm not gonna fight you. Don't you let me ban your father standing your way. Because I don't consider you my son. Take that damn tin plane of yours and fly it straight in the devil's eyeball. I don't want to ever lay eyes on you again, you hear? Now get! down on all the cowboys by the shoot last night. We got a new suspect. Yeah, who? Bo Dobbs. Dobbs? How come... Shh. Homicide Stone. What's that again? When? All right, we'll get right on it. What's that? You were going to tell me something about Dobbs. Yeah. He had a son on the circuit two years ago. He was in a bulldogging event, and he caught a horn through his leg because his partner was negligent. And his partner was Clint Johnson. That's right, and Bo Dobbs swears to this day that Clint was loaded. But why does that put Dobbs on our list? Because the kid's crippled for life. Hmm. Hmm. I give you a whole new wrinkle, you say to me, hmm? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the phone call came from the cow palace. Bo Dobbs is dead.
found him. I did. He was just lying out there in the corral. Trampled? Oh, no. Bo been around too long. He had too much savvy for anything like that. Steve, comb the area, see what you come up with. Right. Well, Bernie, my friend, what have you got? I won't know for sure till we get him downtown, but it looks like it was just a blow to the back of the head by a blunt instrument of some kind. Nothing like a hoof print or a horn. When did it happen? I'd say less than an hour ago. Let me know for sure, will you? Right. Mike? Yeah. Looks like part of a shirt. Anybody recognize this? Was Bo murdered? Well, it looks that way, Mr. Jensen. You know anybody wearing a shirt like that? Bo was one of ours. We'll handle it. Yeah, yeah. we'll handle it. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Hold it right there. I want no vigilante homespun law here. Now, is that clear? Or do I have to make it plainer? Dobbs was killed on my beat. And I want that man just as bad as you do. Now, let me start again. Does anybody recognize this shirt? Mr. Jensen? Ken Johnson wearing a shirt like that. Who? Ken Johnson. He was wearing a shirt like that. Ken was wearing a shirt like this, all right. Mr. Johnson, your son has disappeared. Now, do you have any idea where we can find him? Now, if you think this is just a family matter, you're wrong. Well, before I tell you, I'm going to have a say. I run Ken off because, well, because I figured he killed Clint. Well, don't you think that's for the police to decide? When it comes to Ken, it's still family. But he wouldn't have killed Bo. Put to it, a breed like Ken might kill a man for a woman. A lot of good men been done in by a shiny little thing like Rosie. But when it comes to killing an old-timer like Bo, no. That's a notch or two below a wolf. And that ain't Ken. Then I guess you'd better tell me why you think he killed Clint. I lost one son, Lieutenant. Now you're asking me to lose the other. I'm sorry. Lieutenant. Belongs to Ken. Found behind the chutes. This look like rope hairs. You found it? No, Bo did. I've had my say. You most likely can find Ken at the airport. Stop him. Let's give it a try. trying to take off. My old man called away to blow out. He's clean. Is this part of your shirt? It looks like one I just threw away. Must have come off when he was tearing into me. Why? Where'd you get it? Where'd you have this blowout? I buy his trailer. Why? Because it was found in the corral where Bo Dobbs was murdered.
didn't know a thing about Bo Dobbs? No, sir. Then how did you get those bruises? I told you, my old man. Look, I never fought with Bo, just my old man. Ask him. Why would I want to kill Bo? Because Bo found this knife and he gave it to your father. Uh-uh. You thought your father wouldn't talk. And you fixed it so that Dobbs couldn't. Oh, come on, it didn't happen that way. I swear it didn't. You went straight to the bar where you picked up your sister-in-law, and then you went right to your father's trailer. That's right. And after you fought with your father, you went to the airport with a man you didn't even know. Oh, come on, I, I told you his name is Garner. Gardner, he's a salesman. And he wanted you to endorse some shirts. That's right. Look, I've been trying to brush him off, but he tagged along when me and Rosie left the bar. And then he cornered me again when I left my dad. You can check it out. We are. When did you see this knife again? Oh, I told you I don't remember exactly. This morning sometime. Did you get a hold of him? Did he tell you? His name's John Gardner. He's a shirt representative with Western Sun. Said he's staying at the Bayshore Motel. And he tells it just like Ken. Even down to the airport gate he dropped him off at. He's willing to sign a statement, anything. I told you. I told you I didn't do it. What's he doing here? I asked him to come. He said you couldn't have done it to him. That's plain you didn't buy his word. It's not his word I'm questioning. It's yours. I hear you were fixing to take off. You did kind of put the wind in my back. How's it look? Well, it looks as though he's clear as far as Dobbs is concerned. But you still think I killed Clint? I think two people had good reason to cut that rope. Ken and Rosie? That's right. And I don't figure it was Rosie. Why not? Because cutting that rope wouldn't guarantee that her husband would die. But I might have just to win that championship. Did you? No! But you did help your brother cinch that rope around the bull. Tell you what, Lieutenant. The way Clint was hitting the booze and the pills, I didn't need to cut this to beat him. He was beating himself. But he must have thought you did when he brought this knife to your father. Bo didn't bring me the knife. Marty did. Wait a minute. Jensen brought you that knife? Yeah. And he said Dobbs found it? That's right. Said he found it behind the bull shoots. Can we run that network tape? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Why? I want to see something. Excuse me. All right, could you hold it right there, please? Look at that. What? Mr. Johnson, what is the first thing a clown's supposed to do when a rider goes down? They start waving off the bull. Then that's what Jensen should be doing, is that right? Well, Marty's getting on a bit now. Works a barrel, mostly. Doesn't take chances like the rest of the boys. But he's not taking any chances at all. He's just standing there. He could have done something, couldn't he? Well, I guess he could... All right, let me put it another way. He's done everything right since then, hasn't he? Steve, get it out, will you? I don't know, Mike. I'm just trying to put the pieces together. And I remember Mo telling me the clown's supposed to keep the bull away from the rider when he's down. I sort of half remember seeing this one clown just standing there. It was Jensen. And Jensen found the rope. Jensen brought us a knife. He found Dobbs. And he could have seen Ken and his father fighting and find that piece of shirt. He could have planted it by Dobbs, too. Yeah. Don't ask me why. I haven't found the motive. But Jensen was the guy that got us thinking about Ken and Rosie in the first place, you remember? Yeah, the fight. The split tooth. Mr. Johnson, did Ken and Clint really have that fight? Yeah, they sure did. That girl's bad news clean through. But Jensen doesn't see her that way, does he? What? No, he, uh... He thinks she's kind of special, right? Marty? Sure. He was with Rosie when you went to see her, right? Mm-hmm. And Ken said he was with her at the tavern? And do you remember how he defended her when we asked about Ken and Clint fighting over her? Yeah. I sure do. Pretty as a pair of pink slippers. Get up there. Rosie! Rosie, what, what are you doing? I'm getting out of here. Well, you can't pull up stakes and go just like that. I got to. You can't say. I stick around here, I'll mess him up the same way I did Clint. Well, hold on a spell. I, I'll get me that spread up in Montana and you could go there. That's sweet, Marty, but I'm probably just going back to Texas. No. You ain't running out on me now. It's going to be special for us. Not like it was with Clint and maybe Ken. It's you and me. 
That's the way I always planned. You know, the more I think about it, the more I think you could be right. Old Marty was always around, paying Rosie special attention. Clint dead, Ken in jail. He could figure he might have a chance. Yeah, he could have killed Clint and framed Ken. The more I think about it, I think I was wrong. Why is that? Because Jensen wasn't around the shoots long enough to cut that rope, was he? Well, not really. Maybe he didn't cut the rope. What do you say? The lab said it was. They didn't say when. Only Jensen said that. That's right. Now, wait a minute. You're losing me. Remember when I asked you about the rope and you said sometimes it broke without being cut? Yeah. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe it just broke. You mean it uh, could have been an accident? An accident that Jensen made look like murder by cutting the rope afterwards. To frame Ken. And getting Rosie for himself. It's possible. Let's turn up here. I ain't never stopped thinking about you, Rosie. Not since Fort Worth. Marty. I know you You ain't never said nothing about it since, but well, you think about it, too, don't you? Marty, Clint and I had a fight that night. I was at loose ends, and I had too much to drink. That night meant everything to me, everything. You, you don't know what it's like following the rodeos around all by yourself, traveling on the road, and, well, after a while, a, a, a fellow gets wondering what's going to happen to him when he gets old and got nobody. A, well, that night gave me something to aim for. Marty, we've had a lot of fun. We've had a lot of laughs. You always could make me laugh, but that's it. I ain't talking about laughs, so I'm talking about what we had that night. We had one night. That was it. Oh, we had more, much more. And we're going to have us a ranch, too, you and me. I'm not going away with you. You still don't understand, do you? You don't have to think of Clinton, Ken. I fixed him. What have you done? Oh, nothing bad, uh, except for Bo. He didn't understand, and he wouldn't let us be together. Oh, my God, you killed him. You killed them both. I didn't kill him. It, it was the booze Clint was taking. The booze and all them pills, that's what killed him. When the, when the rope broke and he got tossed in the dirt, it was just like it happened for you and me. We both wanted him dead. You as much as me, I know that. It was easy for me. I, all I had to do was just hold back a couple of seconds. I know he was so full of booze he couldn't scramble away from the bull. And then I, then I see how easy it'd be to, to fix it so that Ken was gone too. But Bo, he seen me take Ken's knife, and, and he knowed how I felt about you. He figured out what I'd done. He was going to tell Roy about it, and I couldn't have that. That's crazy. You are crazy. Don't you call me that. Get your hands off me, you old fool. You just see I love you like I don't love nothing else. Don't you touch me. Get 
I get there in time? Yes, Marty, you did fine, just fine. I guess everybody would like to buy back one moment in their lives. Maybe he was lucky enough to have his. goodbye. I wish you good luck. Uh, thanks. Thanks for getting me out of a tight one. And where's Rosie? She left this morning, back to Texas. She'll make out. I gotta go. Ride him good. Hey, don't forget what I told you. He'd be learning to fork up. Biggest rule giver since Moses, isn't he? <laughs> hey, 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 pop corn. I'll pay for no, it. I got it. No, no, let me. I got it right Please. here. How much? You paid last 25, time. Let me. 25, 2 here. Next time. How much did you pay for? Two. And now, I want to shoot number one from Austin, Texas, Kenny Dowd. Right here with me. Yes, sir. Right here with me. Joe Bowers, Kenny Boy, right here with me. San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Marriott Hartley, Clint Howard, David Bruner, Marge Redman. Tonight's episode, Cry Help. I don't know. 
Well, maybe you ought to just wait for your birthday and let yourself be surprised. But that's no fun. Maybe it's a new model ship. A square rigger, maybe. Hey. We gotta put it away. Why? Just do it. What have you got there? Mom said we had a gun. A real gun. But she never said where. Your mother's not home? You better run along. Yes. She's supposed to be here when you get home from school. She tells me she always is. Well, you said you wouldn't be home till late tonight. Maybe early tomorrow morning. So she figures she can check out for a while, huh? Is that what happens every time I go on the road? Is it? Is it? Hey, I don't know. Well, you do know where your mother is, don't you? Is she with somebody? Who's she with? Well, you mean like with one of the neighbors? I mean a man. Now, who is she with? Answer me. Answer me. No! I don't know. I'm on an answer. I don't know where she is. No! This time I'm calling the police. No. I don't know. No. Headquarters report of a possible 240 in progress at 589 Hayward. Any other units in the vicinity? 240, 240. Oh, the child beating. Yes, yeah, a couple blocks away. Inspectors A1 to headquarters. We'll respond to that possible 240. Child beating. you made it a point to be home after school. So you hit Paul because I wasn't, because you were mad at me? Now, don't you lecture me about that. Not you. I just wanted to know where you were. And I still do. Come on, Bob. Just because we're married doesn't make me your slave, you know? I have a right to lead a life of my own. Oh, yeah? Well, you know that depends on just who you're leading it with. Police? Are you from the police? Yes, ma'am, yeah. It's a Heron boy right up here. This isn't the first time that it happened. They've beaten him before. Are you sure of that, Mr. Uh, Russell, Mr. Russell? You've got yes, to stop. Sure. All hours of the day and night, we can hear that boy screaming sometimes. You just stay down there. We'll do all we can. I know what you're doing, Bonnie, and I'm not going to put up. Hello? Hello? I can't. Hello? Mrs. Harris? Yes? I'm Lieutenant Stone. This is Inspector Keller. We received a report that there's a problem here. May we come in? It's just a family argument, Lieutenant. Well, did that family argument involve your son here, Mr. Harris? I slapped Paul. I... It's not something that I'm proud of. You okay? Yes, sir. I never hit him before. God help me, I won't do it again. Excuse me, but the call we got over the radio was about a child beating. And we just heard that it's happened before. Paul, take your jacket and shirt off. Just a minute, Lieutenant. The boy said he was all right. It's, it's over now. Mrs. Harris, our job is to make sure of that. Paul, would you please take off your shirt? <laughs>
okay, you can put it back on. Paul, how old are you? Thirteen. Thirteen? I want you to be honest with me. Did your father do this to you? He's not my father. This is Paul's stepfather, Lieutenant. Oh, I see. Paul? Well, I, I fell down some stairs. You know, at school, they're, they're real high. He has a, a balance problem. We're having a doctor check into it soon. Yes, you do that. I'll put it in our report along with everything else. No, don't bother. Stay right here. Thank you very much. Aren't you going to do anything? Well, we've done all we can. We'll call Juvenile Hall now. I just don't know how she allows it. Her own son. Well, that's one I can't answer, Steve. I only know when you respond to a 240, a child beating call, it's ugly. It's one of the ugliest. See, was that kid standing over there when we drove in? I think so, yeah. Hi. You live here? What's your name? Tommy. Are you a friend of Paul's? You guys are cops. Came by to help Paul. Tommy, how'd you like to do your friend a favor? Can you tell us what happened at Paul's? Did you see anything? If you tell us, maybe we can do something about it. No, you can't. You can't do anything! All day? Yeah. Half lunch? No. Here. Go on, I saved it for you. I'm not hungry. Take it anyway. that bad with your folks, too? Worse. What did you do? Here goes algebra. Ah, two points. I heard you got in trouble. Told you that. Mom, she doesn't want us hanging around together. Just a kid then. Everything's different now. Do you like living with the Sanders? Yeah. They're great. Don't you ever miss her? Your real mom? Not anymore. I'd never feel that way. I wouldn't care what she did. She doesn't mean it. I know that. Well, I gotta get going. Trash man comes tomorrow, and I gotta empty the waste baskets and stuff. You coming? Gotta go home sometime. 
Come on, I'll race you. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Tommy. Can't you stay for a while? Bob! Bob, what are you doing? Hey, hey, you mind? Stop it! Stop it, Bob, listen, we can talk about it. Talk? I'm gonna talk when all this time I've been feeling guilty for suspecting you, and you've been spending your afternoons with him. But you don't know what you're doing! I know exactly what I'm doing. No, Bob. Bob, stop it! Put it back! Oh. Bob, are you crazy? Put it back! Mom? Mom? And I'm calling in again. Somebody's been shot. Struggled. I mean, all I wanted to do was to get the gun away, to talk to the man rationally. And he thought you were seeing another man? Yes, sir. Oh, he was crazy like that. He was jealous of any man I even smiled at. Anyway, Paul, um, Paul tried to help. Bob knocked him down. And Tommy... Tommy's last name, that's, uh, that's Sanders, is that right? Yes. Well, what exactly was it that he did? Well, Bob dropped the gun, and Tommy picked it up. And then... And then... Oh, God. Oh, dear God. He shot your husband? <laughs> Mrs. Harris, do you have any idea what made him pick up the gun and shoot it? No. No, I, I watched it happen, and it, it all happened so quickly. I think he thought he was trying to help. There was, there was nothing that I could do. But Tommy was standing right over here when he pulled the trigger, is that correct? Yes. And uh, do you know where we can find him now? He lives about a block up on the next street over. Paul, what's the address? Oh, what is it? Come on. It's a... Uh, it's a fourth house. It's on the far corner. It's on the left side. Thank you. Do you have a doctor, a family doctor? Yes. Well, I think it would be wise if you and the boy took a mild sedative. Oh. Oh, thanks. We'll be all right. Thank you. Lieutenant! Yes? I, uh... I, I never liked Tommy playing with Paul. I never liked it. One of the neighbors said that he'd done some bad things, some juvenile problems. He even had a record. Record? What was it for? Oh, no, no, I, uh, I didn't listen. It was gossip. I, I didn't... Uh... That's all right. We'll check it out. Goodbye. Bye, Paul. Mom, what are they going to do to Tommy? He'll be all right, Paul. He's just a young boy. He'll be all right. But what did he do before? 
I told you, I don't know. Didn't you hear me? I don't know. Yes, ma'am. Tommy couldn't do such a thing. Well, that's why we're here. We wanted to hear Tommy's side of the story. May we talk to him, please? Willie, uh, he isn't here. I haven't seen him since this morning. But, but Tommy is, is not the kind of a boy that you can hold on to too tightly. He's, he needs room. He, he needs trust. More than most boys his age? Yes, I'm afraid so. You see, Tommy is our foster son. Dave and I, that's my husband. We love Tommy very much. And we're trying to help him learn to live with his past and overcome it. I, I just can't believe that anything like what you're saying could happen again. Again, ma'am, I... Uh... Just what is it Tommy has to overcome? Brutality. Ugliness. A nightmare no child should have to live through. You see, Tommy's parents, his mother drank. She couldn't even make a decent home. And she was more afraid of losing her husband than she was of anything else in her life. And he, well, he apparently blamed his wife and his boy for all of his own failures. Then one night, about six years ago, Tommy was eight. His father started in on his mother, beating her. A child like that, I, all he knew was that he, it was his mother and he loved her, needed her. Anyway, he got a gun, a rifle, and, and he shot his own father. can't do anything. What? That's what Tommy told us the other day, remember? You can't do anything. Hey, Mike, you're gonna have to put out an APB. Yeah, I gotta find him. I know, I know. But he must have been scared when he pulled that trigger. I'll bet he's a lot more scared right now. Yeah. We have to help him, and fast. Well, that's what I was thinking. Maybe we ought to give it one more shot first, just the two of us. Kids probably got some hangouts. So maybe the social worker handles the case with them. You're right. It's worth a try. Try to calm down, Ruth. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm sorry. It's all right. Take it easy. Just take it easy. But try to remember everything. Right. Everything. Yes. Now, the police were here when? How long ago? I don't know. Just a few minutes. It was just before I phoned you. Oh, Dave, I didn't mean to worry you with that message, but I was so scared. I, all of a sudden, I didn't know what to do. All and right, all right. Now, the police actually told you that Tommy shot someone? Yes. Did they see him do it? No. It was the woman. What woman? Oh, she was the mother of, of the boy he was playing with. I, I think their name was Harris. They're positive? She described everything that happened to them. My God. Where did the gun come from? I don't know. How could he have gotten his hands on a gun? Well, it was theirs. It must have been in the house somewhere. And then they said Tommy ran? Yes. Why? I mean, how did something like this happen? Tommy! You believed it. Tommy! Where were you? You believe it? What? What they said. Do you believe it? Tommy, I want you to come in here and sit down. You do? Tommy, you do! No! Tommy! Tommy! 
It's, um, it's all over now, you know. Hey, brought you something. <laughs> it's supposed to be for your birthday, but... You're all mixed up, aren't you? I... I got a confession to make to you. I'm kind of mixed up, too. I need you, Polly. You know that, don't you? I know I don't... I don't act like it a lot. But I need you now more than ever. Be... Just... Just the two of us. When, when your daddy left. Mom? Yeah. Won't he ever come back? No. Why not? Oh, Mom. Mom, please, what did I do? No, no, Paul, honey, you didn't do anything. You're mad again. No, no, Paul, I'm not. I'm not mad. It's all right. What's all right? That you're mad at me. I think I'm old enough now that I can understand. Understand what? Why you blame me for Daddy's leaving? Oh, Paul, that's not true. Mom, it's Mom, not... please. You said you were mixed up, too. Was it about me or was it about Tommy? What? If it's about me, it's okay. Really, I understand now, and it's okay. But Tommy... Oh, shut up, Paul. Mom. Shut up! Mom, please! Just you can't do shut anything! Up. Mom! Mom!
sure? Okay. I just wish I could say thanks, Charlie. What? That was a lab. The gun is lousy with prints. Two sets of adults and some that have to match a kid's. Tommy's? Yeah. Smeared. All of them are smeared. Except one match his. What's that, the ballistics report? Yep. Open and shut, 45 caliber and a 45 service issue. Oh, yeah, Mrs. Sanders called in. Tommy came home, but he took off again. Did you get out an APB? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the heat's on. Armed police force looking for a 14-year-old kid. I don't know. Wait a minute. Hold it right there. Now, I don't like this any more than you do. But we gotta find the kid. Especially when he's down on himself like the Sanders say he could be. Giving up on himself and everybody else. Homicide, Lieutenant Stone. Yeah? Yeah, where? Okay, you stay with it and keep us posted. Tommy's mother? Yeah. Nothing. Are you sure the child welfare doesn't have another location on her? They gave you the last one they have in L.A. She left L.A. three months ago, no forwarding address. Could uh, Tommy have gotten in touch with her? No, oh, I wouldn't know. Well, maybe she got in touch with him. There's no way the agency would never give her the address. Look. Why don't we call and talk to Paul Harris? He was a friend of Tommy's. Maybe he'd know where he'd go. All right. I guess we better talk to him. That's all you can do is just keep digging. Dig, dig, dig. I'm sorry, son, but $2.52 won't take you to L.A. Not even on a kid's ticket. How far will it take me? Local bus. Oakland, maybe. Tell you what I'd do if I was you, though. I'd complain to the interstate commerce people after I got home. Look, son, I don't know what your folks are sore about, but they'll cool off. Take it from a guy who's been there. Doesn't help to run away. Son. Son. she'd mind if we came in for a minute? I don't know. Just a minute. I'd like to talk to you about something. I guess so. Jim, what happened? Have an accident? I was trying to fix it. Oh, hell. Looks like you got a pretty good repair shop here. <laughs> uh, you said you wanted to talk. Yes. Yes, I do. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about your friend, Tommy. Did you find him yet? No, 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 not yet. What's going to happen to him if you do? Well, that's not really up to us. We're just trying to find him, make sure he's all right. You know where he is? Are you going to put him in jail? No, 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 we don't put children in jail. Well, what do you do with them? Well, we take him to juvenile hall for a while until the judge decides what's best for him. Well, what if they've been in trouble before? You know about Tommy's background? Just that he had to live with somebody else. Is that what could happen this time? Well, there's special courts to take care of things like what your mother said Tommy did. No, no. Mom said they wouldn't do anything to him because he's just a kid. She said it's not like if... If what? If he was a grown-up. She said things would be different then. But they wouldn't do anything to Tommy. That's all. Where's your mother now? She had to go out. She go see somebody or, or what? I don't know. She just made a phone call and went out. Hey, let's get back to Tommy. Do you know where he might be? No. Oh, some secret place maybe that the two of you would like to go when you wanted to be alone? No. Your mother said Tommy was standing up here when he fired the gun. I guess. Well, was he? Yeah. And where were you? Right by Tommy. Why? No, I'm just being curious. Paul, I'm afraid this ship has had its last voyage. Unless you're a better mechanic than I am. 
Looks brand new. Is it? Yeah. Well, who gave it to you? Got it from my mom. Steve, what do you say? Yeah, okay. Listen, Paul, good luck with your boat. Yeah, thanks. Listen, if you happen to remember where he is, just let us know, will you? Okay. Goodbye, Paul. It's a good ship, and I wish I had one. We'll see you. Just what did you pitch in there? Phone number? Since you got a phone call left, I figured maybe that'll tell us where she went. And that stuff about where were you standing, what's all that about? Two kids, they were standing right next to each other. Oh, now, wait a minute. What? Are you saying that this kid pulled the trigger? This is the kid that Harris beat up. But Tommy was the kid that ran. I think Tommy has been running all his life. At least that's the impression I got when we were talking with Mrs. Sanders. Well, are you thinking that Paul's mother lied just to protect him? Is there a mother's natural instinct to want to protect her child? He sees his mother and father fighting. He finally gets a chance to get back at the man that's been beating him up. He picks up the gun and he shoots it. Could be. Well, let's see where this leads us. Look at that. Yeah. Hey, aren't we supposed to know that kid? You mean the kid homicide's looking if for? It's to make. You better call it in. Central Florida headquarters. Spotted suspect of APB for murder warrant. Headed west at Market and Pine. Partner in pursuit on foot. <laughs> This is the place? Yeah, this is the uh, address they gave me. Oh, Ed Cooper, can I help you fellas? Yeah, my name is uh, Stephen Keller. This is Lieutenant Stone. Oh, yeah. You handled a case involving a family named Harris, or Robert Harris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a way we could talk alone for a moment? Well, I guess so, sure. Say, uh, I wasn't aware of this service. Maybe you need publicity. Good thought, Lieutenant. But child abuse is something most people don't want to hear about. They just keep hoping it's going to stop on its own. Well, let's see here. No way. Lieutenant, I'm sorry. But it looks like we're going to have to use my private office. What, this is your private office, Mr. Cooper? I always thought it was mine. <laughs> well, this is where it's happening, isn't it? It Lieutenant? certainly is. And the name is Ed. This is strictly a first-name operation. All volunteers and all former bad guys. You were one of these guys? That's right. But it's been a long time for me now. And I'm hoping I can help keep somebody else from going through what I went through. What I put my son through before I got help. 
So now I, uh, I man the phones once a week and hope that some other abuser will call up and cuss me or talk or just cry instead of taking out his frustration on his kids. And that's the cause, huh? Frustration. Well, I'll tell you, Lieutenant. I've got a library on the subject at home. There are so many causes that nobody's sure. Now, the only thing that is sure is the damage that's done. 250,000 children are beaten or injured every year. 35,000 of them end up seriously hurt. Two of them die every day. And at the hands of the people who are supposed to love them. What do you think caused Mr. Harris to lay into Paul the way he did? Mr. Harris? Yeah. Mr. Harris had no problem that I was aware of. Wait a minute. It was her. It... Paul's mother, it was her. Did she call today? Now listen, Lieutenant. I'm not a doctor. And I know what she told me isn't legally confidential information. But I just wouldn't feel right telling you guys what we talked about. You wouldn't feel right about a 14-year-old boy being accused of murder that he didn't commit. Now, would you, Ed? We got the call. Where is he? Lost him, Lieutenant. We know he got off the bar at Lexington. But he doesn't live too far from here, so he probably knows this area better than we do. Check the lumber yard. Don't stop. Get going. Around the block. Come on. Keep moving. So what do you think? Just keep it moving. I don't want to think. Tommy? Tom? Tommy, are you here? Tommy, I'm sorry. I am. Mom said it would be all right. They wouldn't do anything to you. Tommy, please came to the house again today, just a little while ago. What'd you tell him? Nothing. I couldn't. Not even about this place? <sighs> no. Tommy, I didn't know what to do. It's okay. I just couldn't tell what really happened. I couldn't. I know. Maybe you just better go now, okay? Are you going to be all right? Like your mom said, I'll be OK. I'll see you. Yeah.
Come here, Paul. Now, wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Is he inside, Paul? Where's Tommy Hyde? Don't hurt him. Please don't hurt him. He didn't do anything. I'll get him. Inspectors 8 1 to headquarters. Tommy? to hurt you. All we want to do is help. You think I did it too, don't you? Well, did you? Doesn't matter. Oh, come on. It matters a lot, especially to your mother and father. Oh, I heard her talking to him. She thought I did it too. Well, I don't know what you heard, but I know what she thinks about you. But she told me herself. That's right, yeah. And right now, she's pretty scared with you running off like this. So why don't we go on home so she'll know you're all right, okay? Come on. What about Paul? We're going to want to talk to Paul's mother, too. Steve, uh, we'll wait for him in there. What's the matter? What do you want me to do? I thought you wanted to prosecute him. No. No, I don't want to do that. Does he... does he have to be? You said he killed your husband. Well, but he was just trying to help. I mean, he was just a young kid who was, who was trying to help. Well, you saw him pull the trigger, didn't you? You said he picked up the gun and shot your husband. Well, that's what you said, didn't you? What did he say? Now, you know he said something entirely different. He lied. Did he? Or did you? Isn't that what the Parent Child Center is trying to help you stop? Lying to yourself and to everybody else? We know how Paul got those welds. Mrs. Harris, you knew about Tommy's problem, didn't you? And you thought we would hold that against him. Take the blame off of you. A 14-year-old boy. Now, you pulled that trigger, didn't you? Don't lie.
saw me? It's okay. Some things are hard. new bikes, huh? Mm-hmm. How are things working out? Oh, fine, Lieutenant, just fine. A little crowded with both of them in the same room, but my husband says that's why they build bunk beds. You know what? Your husband's right. <laughs> and how's Tommy's adoption coming? It'll be final next week. That's terrific. Yes, it is. But you know what the best part is? What's that? At night, when they're supposed to be asleep. And we can hear them laugh. <laughs> 